Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Shutterstock. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you some different ways you can enhance your drone footage in post-production. These tips will help make your shots more dynamic and visually interesting. So when it comes to achieving your vision for a drone shot, a lot can be done in post-production. I wanna share with you guys seven ways you can enhance your drone shots in post. And I like to think of this as almost like plussing the shot or adding a little bit of extra flair to it. And this is gonna help your shot stand out to your clients. Now you can do most of these techniques in your own editor of choice like Premiere Pro or After Effects. I'm gonna demonstrate these inside of After Effects just because it's gonna allow for the most customization. Before we get started, I do wanna recommend checking out the full blog post for this tutorial over on Shutterstock. I have links where you can directly find some resources I mentioned and a project file with some sample scenes and footage. A link will be in the description. All right, so the first way you can enhance your drone shots is by adding in zooms in post. I know this one's pretty obvious, but I have an extra trick that can help add to this technique. If your drone footage is in 4K, you can scale in on it in a 1080p timeline and not lose any quality. Go ahead and keyframe the scaling movement and smooth out the keyframes by making them easy ease keyframes. It also helps to turn on motion blur for your footage layer. Depending on how fast your zoom is, this can make a difference. Finally, for the extra trick I mentioned, add optics compensation to an adjustment layer above your footage, and then keyframe the field of view to change at a similar time as the zoom. This can add more depth to your zoom and works really well on fast zoom shots. The next way you can enhance your drone shots is by adding in alpha channel elements. And these are footage elements with a transparent alpha channel that you can just drag and drop on top of your footage. The most popular of these tend to be birds flying, these can be a great way to plus an existing drone shot, and Shutterstock has a large assortment of these types of clips. You can see on this sunset shot where I added in a group of birds in the distance, and on this cabin shot with a hawk that I added into the background. I think the key to doing this is keeping the added elements kind of secondary to the overall shot, and you also don't want to make them too big so they're distracting. Next, you can add some atmosphere to your shots with 3D tracked fog. Adding in fog to your existing drone shot is a lot easier than you might think. First, camera track your footage in After Effects. Next, just drop in some footage of smoke or fog. Create a random mask shape and then feather it. Set it to a screen blending mode and then duplicate it a few times and offset those copies in 3D space by making them 3D layers. This helps create parallax during the camera movement. If your fog footage is slow moving, you can actually let it play for more added movement. However, I like to freeze frame each layer at different points because the fog will likely have enough movement from the parallax on the scene. You can see how drastically you can change the look of a shot with this before and after. Also, the fog overlays I'm using are free from Premium Beat, so check out the blog post for those. Next, you can change the color of location lighting at night. This is an easy trick for nighttime drone shots it can really add a lot of production value. First, create an adjustment layer and create a broad mask around some lights in your nighttime scene. Keyframe the mask movement so that it tracks with the lights. Then simply add a hue and saturation effect and offset the hue colors. Since the dark areas are desaturated, they'll stay dark, but the lights will change. This method can give you lots of creative control over your location. Next, you can add motion blur to your drone footage in post. This is great if you filmed your drone footage at a high shutter speed, or if you speed up your drone footage in post and you want it to look more natural and cinematic. There are a few built-in effects inside of After Effects you can use to achieve this. The first is pixel motion blur, which creates motion blur based on the pixel motion in the footage. The next effect, which renders a bit faster, is CC force motion blur, which blends intermediate frames of the footage over itself to create the blur. You can adjust the number of motion blur samples and the shutter angle on both effects. Going along with motion blur, speed ramps are another great way to enhance your drone footage. You'll often see these types of shots on travel videos or as establishing shots on TV shows. To achieve this effect, you'll need to enable time remapping on your footage. This will add a keyframe at the beginning and the end of your footage. Next, add a keyframe where you want the speed ramp portion to start and another one where you want it to stop. Then move up the third and fourth keyframes on your footage. 
This effectively will speed up the middle section of footage. As a bonus, I recommend adding in motion blur to the middle sped up portion. You can do this by splitting the clip into three sections based off the keyframe locations. Then add pixel motion blur or CC force motion blur to the middle section. Finally, another way to add visual interest is by racking focus. This is another great technique to use for establishing shots because it can help you pace out a scene. However, you want to make sure you create natural looking bokeh, so you'll need to use the camera lens blur effect. This effect will take longer to render, but it's going to look much more true like a rack focus with a lens and it has a lot of options you can customize. Keyframe the blur radius from something like 40 to 0 over a few seconds. You can accent this even more just as we did with the zooms in post by pairing it with the optics compensation effect. Keyframe the field of view to change a little bit with the blur keyframes. I also recommend adding a little bit of noise set at around 4% to emulate some film grain that's going to be on top of the bokeh. Alright guys, hopefully these tips will help you visually enhance your own drone shots. And don't forget to check out the blog post over on Shutterstock if you want a deeper dive into each of these techniques. This has been Charles Jager for Shutterstock. Thanks for watching.